Yay, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to hide this for a little bit, see if this helps with the sound. So I am recording from the vegan bakery down the street from my house because I decided I wanted to be outside, enjoy more of the nice weather that is left of the summer over here in Rhode Island. Um, just kind of change up my environment and uh, we'll talk about the Capricorn full moon happening on Wednesday, July 13th, or <clears throat> depending on your time zone, perhaps if you're more in the Asia hemisphere, very early in the morning on Thursday. So before we dive into this very delicious, wisdom filled full moon, I have a couple announcements to make. The first is I have affiliate, I have become a partner with the affiliate program for Luna Astrology Software. I have been using their software for three years now, I would say, and it was actually the first software that I ever bought. It's extremely affordable. It's extremely easy to use. And I have a 10% off discount for you to use, which I'm going to link at the show notes. Okay. So if anybody is interested in using a professional software, I highly, highly recommend them. I love their company and I just joined on their affiliate program, which I'm super excited to be partnered with them. Um, their aesthetics is beautiful. The, the creator, Kevin, has a Pisces moon, and you can definitely see that through <laughs> the, the look itself, which I'm going to show it anyways. I'm going to use the Luna Astrology software in the video today, so you guys have probably seen it before in my videos because I have a couple of different softwares that I use, um, but I'm going to be fully with on board with Luna. And uh, they just keep changing and growing. They keep adding new stuff. They keep adding new features. They keep adding new um, asteroids as they go and new organization tools. And I'm just really, really happy to be partnered with this, this company. The owner is amazing. The people that work with him are amazing. And I'm really happy to support them. And I have a 10% off coupon code for you. And again, it's so affordable. And you can either buy this subscription um, for the full year with 10% off, or you can be super non-committal and do month to month and see how you like it and still get the 10% off coupon code. So um, I definitely like that too. Second is Seiko Shocker Oracle deck is still for sale and it's now on Amazon. So if you were too lazy to, which I totally understand, <clears throat> no judgment to go find my website and figure out how to purchase off the website, it's actually available on Amazon. You can just type in the Zen goddesses with an X Seiko Shocker Oracle deck check that out people have been loving it and i'm so thrilled i i mean this is like one of the funnest things i've ever created and it's also on etsy so if you have a preference on where you shop and you buy things it's available on all of those places which leads me to my third announcement is i'm going to be traveling to write the next chakra oracle deck the, the root chakra with my business partner, Brittany, um, August. So I will be moving to Thailand for a few months. I'm creating finally the course that I have been wanting to create for so long now. So I will be having a course on the moon for you all. It's going to be so incredibly in depth. I can't even begin to tell you how excited in powerful, potent, empowering, educational, insightful. I have so many things that I've just learned and created through my own techniques along the way that this moon course, I believe there's going to be nothing else like that out there. So there's a lot of sun shrine astrology, but there is not enough moon astrology. And it is just as important to me. It is the inner ego and it's super potent and powerful. That's why I show up for the, the new and full moon videos because I'm very in tune with, uh, with Luna. So it's important to part of the astrology. So, and anybody will learn whether you are a beginner or mediocre or advanced, this course is going to be like full on, <laughs> full on. So I think anybody and everybody could get something out of it. And I'm 100% positive on that. So with that, um, we're going to be 
Brittany is also working on her own course. I'll be working on mine. We're writing the Root Chakra Oracle deck. So we're gonna have our second deck published sometime next year. And we're also going to be recording season two of the podcast. So I don't know if many of you have turned into my podcast. Um, it's called Spiritual Insights and you can get it on Apple. You can get it on Spotify. You can see it on Amazon, basic iHeartRadio and on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, the Zen Goddesses with the X. The podcast has been getting amazing feedback and it's been getting downloaded all over the world. I think we're hitting like 10, like seven all continents right now or something. We've got like 10 countries or something and it keeps growing. And uh, we wrapped up season one. So season two is going to be coming out very, um, we'll be getting to record it while we're in Thailand. And then we'll be out shortly after that. But catch up on season one because there's so much information, I think that will really help you transition into what's actually going to what the world is going to look like moving forward and ahead for us okay so that's enough announcements super sorry about that i just had to get that oh (laughs) i always forget this please do not forget to like and subscribe to my video it obviously helps with algorithm it helps my astrology channel grow and also if you resonate with this and you like it please share like please share this information um you know you never know it might help somebody else the message that i have um might somebody else might really need it and if you're resonating with it who knows somebody in your close sphere might feel the same so please just uh give me a like and subscribe and it's really an energy exchange between us i'm putting my energy out there for you to you know empower everybody through astrology and through the lunar cycles um so i would appreciate it (laughs) um okay so with that i'm gonna share the screen and we're gonna talk about the uh the full moon in capricorn which is you know i think it's going to be a difficult full, full moon for some people because the the moon will be conjunct pluto and um you know that that can bring up some deep emotional stuff that we haven't wanted to look at for a while um you know the capricorn cancer access because the sun is in, in cancer right is, is emotional. It's, it's our inner emotional reality and it's our outer emotional reality. And it's very connected to our home and our foundation. Um, it's connected to what we experienced growing up. And it's also deeply connected to our relationship with our parents or who took care of us um, when we were growing up and how we reflect those patterns within ourselves. And you know, as children, we are looking to the the adult in our life, whoever that is, whoever that is showing up as to protect us and to nurture us and to care for us and provide for us. And oftentimes we will uh, unconsciously repeat those dynamics, even if we feel like we want to be different, for instance, from from our parents or, or from what we experience as a child, there oftentimes is, is deeper layers uh, that are patterns that show up in our life that we end up projecting out into our relationships. And then that causes turmoil and discomfort and arguments in our life and, you know, tension, right? It's, it's signified by the square in the chart between the, the Cancer, Capricorn, they both make a square to Libra, okay? And so that, uh, that those two archetypes also make a square to Aries, right? So it's a really, this, this full moon is about dealing with that cardinal um, cross deeply, okay? And really seeing where dynamics from that were imprinted on you from childhood or growing up or younger experiences, okay? experiences or things you were told, um, reflections that uh, were given back to you on, you know, how money works, for instance, or how to feed yourself or how to, uh, what the home environment looks like or how work should be, right? Or was your parents or, or the people who cared for you, were they hustling? Were they struggling all the time? Did money fluctuate in the house? And now you fluctuate with money in your reality now as an adult, you know, and you don't even notice that maybe those links can be attached because they can, right? 
So it's very much looking with this full moon at the, the inner child and how that still is resonating with you um, in certain ways and being really, really honest and real with yourself because Pluto wants you to be honest and truthful, okay? Pluto's not messing around. Pluto wants you to transform. It wants you to transform from an alchemical level, okay? It's not always physical, okay? The biggest transformations that we can do is on an emotional scale. And a lot of people don't realize that Capricorn is an extremely emotional sign, you know? Yes, it's Earth, but it's opposite Cancer. It's opposite the, you know, in quotes, crybaby <laughs> archetype. Um, but because it's it's taken the emotions from the water signs and it's now crystallized that into like an almost tangible boundary in our energetic field, okay? And under this full moon, it's an opportunity for us to really transform patterns that maybe need to just die away or be broken, okay? And another thing is, um, you know, Capricorn to me represents grandmother and grandfather ancient wisdom, right? Because it's it's the elder, it's it's time and it's maturity and it's hard work and it's hard lessons that it's gone through. You know, like when we think about the Saturn return, right? It takes us 30 years to go back to Saturn and its place and 30 years of time and experiences and lessons and hard work and hardship. And, but there's wisdom in that too, right? There's so much valuable lessons within that space and we're we're not the same after those 30 years okay so and it's time to change because life is about cycles which is why this moon this lunar cycle is so important for us to look at and every lunar cycle is really important for us to look at every month because we are shifting we're shifting on very minimal slow levels but then very big great levels too and that's what i'm really seeing right now in this full moon um with with the capricorn uh pluto conjunction here okay and also Venus. So I'm, I'm bringing Venus in because, you know, Venus is playing a big part in this to me um, because it's, it's in conjunct. Uh, you, you're not seeing Venus in this full moon, okay? Uh, Venus is in Gemini right now. And Gemini, Venus, Venus is about our, our relationships to ourself um, and to others, okay? But while Venus is in Gemini, it's taking on that mythology of, um, you know, I'm going to share the chart. I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to share the chart. Let's do that. There we go. I just got on a rant. <laughs> it's okay though, right? Okay. So let me get my little pointer out here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so look at this down here, okay? We've got, we've got the moon and Pluto at 21 and 27 degrees, and Venus is over here making an inconjunct to this full moon at 24 degrees in Gemini. Venus and Gemini is taking on the mythology of Castor and Pollux, okay? And... Uh, you know, I'll go into this more, I think, when we have more planets in Gemini, when, you know, Mars goes into Gemini, I think that's going to be, it, that myth should be saved for that time, because it's going to be a very potent time for, for us in the United States, especially um, when Mars starts to enter Gemini and goes through its, like, seven-month um, retrograde cycle, okay, that's going to, that's for later on. Right now, it's important to pay attention to um, Pastor and Pollux were, were siblings, okay? But one was, was immortal and one was mortal, okay? And at one point, the immortal twin dies. And 
I mean, the immortal twin dies, right? And the immortal twin is absolutely devastated and lost without his twin that he actually goes to his father Zeus and asks for him to change his fate and and make him mortal so that he can die and also join his brother as well right in the afterlife because he was just so devastated by the fact that he just lost his other half and I think when we go through spiritual deaths okay whether that is a mental physical emotional type of death in our life which does happen right ego deaths um spiritual deaths so like when we lose a significant relationship when we lose a job that we were attached to for so long right or we just decide to switch religions at one point because we decide to change who we are and we're allowed to do that that's a part of evolving and growing and this to me is speaking to this moon pluto conjunction opposite the cancer sun okay there might be an aspect of you that I'm going to put in quotes needs to die. A part of you is human, right? And that is the mortal part of you. And a part of you is immortal. And that is your soul. Okay. And so your soul goes through a series of deaths, whether it's lifetimes, right? Because we have different lifetimes going on at the same time. And our soul experiences death in that way. But our soul also experiences death through cyclical processes in our life alone. Very emotionally hard and challenging times where we evolve and we grow into new versions of ourselves. And so you might not see because it's in conjunction, unless because I'm telling you now with the astrology and the, the astrology gives us awareness there might be a part of yourself that you feel is changing and it's hard for you to let go because you feel like you're losing a part of you, you your twin right your internal twin if you have right have one right so we can pretend like we have one there's a piece of you a part of you that is that's changing right now and Pluto's asking you to do that. Pluto is asking you to, you know, dig something up that maybe is weighing you down, that is not allowing you to expand your boundaries and grow. Okay. And this is really significant to me too, because all the while we have, um, you know, we have, we have a lot of aspects going on this area. Bro. Okay, at the same time, this, um, this full moon is squaring Eris. So you can see 21 degrees Cancer over here. And we've got Eris at 25 degrees of Aries. We've got the square over here coming in from the Capricorn to 25 degrees of Aries. You know, so somebody else could trigger this as well, or something else could trigger you during this, this full moon, you know, especially if you're not... Um, consciously working with the emotions so i just want to let people know about that like don't let something trigger you into um, emotional chaos okay you have control over your emotions and you know the moon in earth is a little bit more grounded than if this was a you know a pisces or cancer or scorpio full moon right it is a bit more grounded, but don't forget that the sun here and Mercury here is also in a water sign. Okay. So and Neptune is, you know, retrograde still in Pisces, right? So we still have a lot of uh, water energy, which is actually making a grand shine in the chart. Um, so just don't let other people tick you off. Basically like look, serve as a reflection of yourself. Okay. And that might be, that might help you investigate what kind of um, boundary breaking needs to happen under this full moon. Okay. It might actually help you illuminate it. Okay. So triggering is, is not always bad. It can be really good, you know? And another thing too is, is Eris is also, uh, she is also, sextile venus okay so again it's like that that value that value of of what you're holding on to is directly connected to eris so yeah if like something is triggering you i definitely think that it might be revealing to you you know what part of yourself or dynamic is really hard to let go of and the best solution is to ask yourself why is it hard to let go or why do i uh, hold on to this trait about myself or why don't I am I not able to follow through with this boundary for instance because it's very much about boundaries too or what kind of 
power dynamics um, are triggering me in my life, for instance, because Pluto also has to do with power. And in some form too, Capricorn can do with can deal with power you know why are these things making me feel this way okay because there's a lot of emotion that i think can show up during this full moon right so it's just things to be aware of um you know eris is also squaring saturn which is retrograde so eris is really um you know an asteroid in here i love the goddess eris um you know obviously she's the goddess of discord and she causes trouble wherever she is but i also have eris conjunct my son in my natal chart so i'm not walking around causing trouble <laughs> You know, I easily notice that I'll say something that can trigger people, but it's also for change. And I also, I have Eris and Aries because I'm an Aries son. So while Eris is an Aries, like it's, it's pushing you to change it, and it's instinctual. Okay. It can be very instinctual in nature. And we still have Saturn retrograde in Aquarius squaring the nodes right? This is a very important aspect that is long going, right? It's not going anywhere. It's going to be here for until the rest of the year. Um, you know, it's asking you to look at those crystallized emotions, right? Because Saturn is ruled by Capricorn. So here's, we got a, a repeating theme here going on, right? And ask you, why have you been taught this way, right? Because Saturn, Saturn wants you right now and Aquarius wants you to liberate and it wants you to break free from the pattern. That's what Aquarius is about. It's about recalibrating, like fracturing something within the pattern, like doing something different, taking something to a new height, right? Revolution, um, innovation, you know, type of dynamics. So it's like, you're able to innovate your emotional body and your emotional boundaries under this full moon in a new way if you're really digging in and looking for it, okay? And Saturn square the nodes and like my other videos, like just a really easy touch on this because I'm not gonna go fully into it because I, I have been in all my videos, but Saturn square the nodes, the resolution point right now is that South node in Scorpio, right? South node in Scorpio, we gotta let go of an attachment that we have. So let go of, of attached belief of a um, uh, uh, character dynamic that was reflected to you growing up that you have now incorporated within your own life. Maybe it's time to let go of that and, and take things into your own hands and do things in your own way and create your own pattern of doing that and innovate yourself in a new way. You know, uh, break those boundaries a little bit, create new ones if you don't have any boundaries, right? But that South Node in Scorpio is asking you to really dig in emotionally and deeply and let go. And then you can travel to that North Node and you can create, you can create those North Node Taurus, you can create those values, you know, in a very stable and stern way that is built on you, nobody else but you. Um, and you know what? Actually, this was. This is perfect timing because take a sip of my smoothie. I was actually, well, last night I was watching Infowars, infowars.com. I don't know if any of you people um, watch that, but they were talking about the um, organ harvesting going on in China. And I don't know if many of you know about this, but this is not new information to me because I actually used to live in China and I have met somebody who was in the Chinese military who talked to me very deeply about his experiences in, in the military, in the uh, chemical brigade and what they would do to, to people and how they would take them away from their families and take them into organ harvesting. Okay, and there is, um, I'm gonna look this up while I do this. Organ harvesting. Oh, geez. Clear. Hold on. I was trying to look up the name of, of the uh, website that I found this on, but anyway, I'm just gonna keep going. So basically, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, has established a, 
propaganda against a group of people who spirit who practice a spiritual technique much like the I Ching I forget the name of it right now off the top of my head um, and have been targeting uh, these groups of people and taking them away completely healthy and they're actually extremely healthy people because of this practice that they do like how they eat and how they exercise and everything it actually keeps them energetically like very 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 strong and healthy well these people are considered like um you know the devil in a sense to to the chinese communist party because of what they stand for and because they don't follow communist law really their beliefs are built on like a chinese spiritual way and so of course what do you what do you know the ccp is targeting them they're sending out all this propaganda against these people and so mass amounts of people over in china also choose to feel the same way because of what the propaganda has told them, because what the propaganda has showed them, right? Without them establishing their own belief systems based on meeting these people or learning about the, the religion. I'm not gonna, it's not a religion, but it's like a way of life, okay? Without even investigating, without even learning about it, like mass amounts of people. And I would bet that a lot of it is based on fear because they also don't want their organs har harvested and they obviously know what's going on over there. And it's very hush. It's like very like, you're not allowed to talk about this stuff over there because they are watching the people. And I don't mean to laugh, but it's very serious. Um, issue that's going on and a lot of the media doesn't cover this because it's a multi-billion dollar industry but it very much is a real thing okay and what i'm seeing here is that this country the ccp has crystallized saturn it has put boundaries on people's beliefs and the way that they are viewing these other groups of spiritual beings okay and that is cemented into these people's heads and not only is it cemented in but it's based in fear. So it's blocked these people into such a tight container that they're living in. And this can be the shadow part of, of Capricorn is that people can get so crystallized, so cemented into their belief because Sagittarius comes before Capricorn, right? That they, they need to break free. What comes after Capricorn? It's Aquarius. And we have the ruler of Capricorn in Aquarius right now retrograde which means we have to take our own beliefs into consideration now we have to strive for individuality we have to start asking ourselves why do i feel this way emotionally why am i holding on to this right is this right for me is the boundary i want to set in place do i want to like structure my life around this is this the the crystallization of the foundation that i want to build my mountain upon you know, and this is like small scale and big scale. Okay. This is like little tiny emotions and also really, really big collective emotions. What's going on? We're all experiencing this right now. And this full moon is illuminating that to me, right? It's illuminating that. So as a society, right, we're also seeing all these changes going on within our governmental structures, which is also Capricorn, Pluto, Pluto moon and Capricorn conjunction like we're going to see where the devil is in our culture in our society it's going to be in a full moon light and it's up to us to change the pattern on an individual scale and on a collective scale it is our time now to do it and we have to do it right okay and how do you do it right Michaela right because we could talk about many, many solutions and many answers. I truly, truly, from the bottom of my heart, believe that the answer is based in love. And it seems so simple and it seems so silly, okay? And I'll re look at this too with the astrology, okay? But, because we're not done with the, the full moon chart, but the answer is in love. Because when you are vibrating from that heart chakra, there is no hate. There is no evil, there is no uncomfortable feelings, there is no suffering, there's none of that. So when you're asking yourself these very serious questions, which is very important to the dynamic in which your life and your future and your children's future is moving forward, is it rooted in love? Is it based in love? 
Okay. That's really, really important right now. Is love of value to you? Do you value love? Maybe, maybe you're not right now. Maybe you're going through really hard emotions. I've been there. I understand it. And I resonate with you. Sometimes we don't, we're not vibrating on that. And if you're not vibrating on that love foundation right now, this is an opportunity. This is a full moon to ask those questions. Why? And to really, really dig in deep and discover that plutonian work discover where that that anger or that pain because of under every negative emotion is just pain so get to the root cause of that pain and ask yourself why and i i really think that this is a major major thing because persephone the goddess the goddess persephone who was taken from her mother and became the queen of hell and spent six months in hell and six months above on earth with her mother demeter is conjunct the sun she is with her mother right now she is bringing the hell into the light she is nurturing everybody she is um her mom is happy because she's above ground right now in the springtime i mean in the northern hemisphere right that's what we're experiencing she is with her mom she is um, nurturing the, the, the gardens and the, the plants and water, watering the, the earth, right? So it's kind of ironic that we have Persephone conjunct the sun right now, opposing the moon, right? It's like, really, it's really an emphasis on like, let's look at the shadow dynamics here in our life and really change those patterns. Like it's time, you know, so... And just like to finish this off because there is a kite in the chart and um, the kite is formed by um, a grand water trine in the chart, which is the south node over here in Scorpio, um, the moon, um, the moon at 21 degrees, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not a grand water trine. It is the south node in Scorpio at 20 degrees. It is Neptune retrograde at 25 degrees. It is the sun at 21 degrees. Okay, that's the grand water trine. And the kite shoots off into the Uranus north node conjunction in Taurus because those two make a sextile, okay, to the, uh, the sun and the Neptune. And the kite is like a magical astrological configuration the chart that shoots off the energy into the north node which again is about creating our own value systems in individuality north node in taurus conjunct uranus uranus is ruled by aquarius this is about breaking patterns stepping into new patterns of individuality of values of strength of love, of compassion, of the senses, right? Tapping into the earth, reminding ourselves how beautiful the earth is. We don't, we don't grow crops without love, without watering and planting the earth, without feeding it freaking plant food, right? All those dynamics, things die in the winter, but in the spring in Taurus, they grow. And right now, the universe is asking us to grow and to nurture and to plant things that are going to last us for the long haul, that are going to be self-sustainable, that are going to be stable, sturdy, grounded, sensual, you know, the things that we need for survival. Like these, these dynamics are so important. We have a grand water trying literally flooding into that kite, into that North Node Uranus conjunction, which will be exact... Um, in about a week after that. Okay, so I really suspect after, you know, when we experience it, actually this week until until that conjunction, I really think that people could get really great new opportunities and new breakthroughs coming through. I think if you're really doing the emotional journey now and the emotional work that um, blessings could come into your life. And I think that if you're choosing not to, which you definitely are, if you're watching this video, you're, you're on the path. But for those who aren't, I think that um, the Uranus North Node conjunction could shake up somebody's life in a way that they weren't, didn't want it, you know, but needed to be done anyway because uranus is the higher mind and it's the higher intelligence and it's coming from wisdom um that is above that's connected from our crown chakra our, our actual our root chakra to the crown chakra and up 
our higher selves, our spiritual team, our higher beings. That's where the Uranus information is stored, our prior lives, the future, the past, the present. Um, so you can take how... <laughs> <laughs> take what you want from that, right? That North node conjunction right there just amplifies that higher self and that higher mind. So again, if we're consciously working with it and we're manifesting and we're focusing our energy on where we want to go, where we want to be, that con conjunction is going to freaking be badass in your life. Um, and if you're blind to it, it's going to be badass still, but maybe not in the way that you like really wanted because you weren't focused on the energy and you weren't putting the energy where you wanted it to be. Okay. Cosmic consciousness. <laughs> That's basically that, you know? So anyway, I hope this wasn't too long of a video. I know that uh, they shouldn't be that long, but everybody who stayed with me, thank you so much. Um, and please just give me a like and subscribe on the channel. Feel free to leave me a comment um, about where this full moon is showing up for you or what you're going through, what you're feeling. I really want to connect with my audience. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, please follow me at the scenic route astrology on Instagram. Um, I'm also on TikTok. Um, I'm not really on Twitter anymore. I, I do have a Twitter once in a while. I post things, um, but mainly... Uh, I'm going to be focusing on YouTube and Instagram and readings. I am available for readings and spiritual coaching as well. If I do, I do both and I do um, sexual trauma healing. I do energy work now. I do channeling. I do mediumship. Um, I got a full um, menu, <laughs> if you will, available now. So and I will be able to take readings while I'm in Thailand as well. So wherever you are in the world, I hope that you guys have a great full moon and um, take care, okay? I will be back again soon. Thanks.